Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 21 of the Novid Notes podcast, um, where we feature many types of creators, content creators, uh, avatar creators, world creators, and many amazing people inside of the platform. So with me today, I actually have two people, as you can see. Uh, we actually have one of the, uh, we have the developer and the tournament admin for Pool Parlor. We have Yuko and Toasterly. How are you both doing? Good, good. Doing... How are you? Fantastic. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess to start off real quick, um, you know, obviously, Toasterly, with being the developer of, you know, the table, um, the infamous table, um, out of curiosity, what really got you in to, you know, going into developing the pool table? Well, initially, when I joined the parlor, I... Uh only did texture work on the table and I made a lot of the table textures um, and I kind of did that for a while and eventually became more of an admin role in the server uh, after that point Metafira kind of stepped away from the table for a while and decided to go off and do their own thing so after a while of them kind of just being away from the community and it dying essentially i asked them to hand it over to me and let me kind of carry the torch a little bit so to say and ever since then i've just kind of fallen in love with it and just wanted to grow it more and more fair fair so about what around what time you know did you start taking over like the table and you know getting things done with the table Mm, that would have been it was 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, so I'm almost two years. So it was the end of our V3. Yeah, it was the end of our yeah. version three and moving into version four, because version four was the first parlor that was under Toast's name that, that kind of really yeah. showed the switch. I gotcha. Um, so out of curiosity then, you know, for your sake, Yuko, you know, uh, what, what kind of got you into, you know, being a tournament admin for Pool Parlor? So I started playing VR chat and the first world I ever joined was the pool parlor. Um, like I was just a standard deskie. COVID had happened. I was, you know, like, what am I going to do with my time? Found VR chat, found a pool world that just so happened to be the pool parlor. Um, and I started hanging out there more. By that time I had inevitably come like, uh, I, I had a quest and then I had an index. I upgraded very quickly and I started hanging out with members. I started learning texture work by, um, Chintzy Kid, um, one of the other admins. And from there, I started making, you know, small cue sticks that they toast allowed me to make a few cue sticks. And then I started learning more and more, and I became a referee uh, working under the current, the previous tournament admin. And I fell in love with that. I fell in love with kind of like being in the background, being able to help out and kind of see how things worked. And from there, when they stepped away to do their own thing, I ended up kind of taking on the role of doing more uh, tournaments, which then led to the creation of what we have as our tournament admin team, which is a team of four of us who we all run the, uh, the tournaments together as, as a team and we're able to kind of make decisions. So it kind of prides us on no one person is making the final say. I'm able to go to them and we can decide just about anything if, if there's anything really needed to be decided on or have a final vote. All four of us can discuss on it and that way it's, it's more delegated out and allows for less stress overall. I gotcha. I gotcha. So I guess a question for the both of you, you know, so if let's say pool parlor didn't exist, what would you think you'd be doing to this day? Oh God. I don't know. Uh, man. Probably be shoved in some network security job. Uh, okay. Yeah. I probably wouldn't, wouldn't have even, yeah. Been near texturing or anything else like that. I'd probably still be just, 
playing around, not spending most of my time. Because I didn't spend much time in VR chat until I really started like going behind the scenes. That's when my time actually ramped up because I got to talk to people, <clears throat> see how things worked. But yeah, if I wasn't doing that, I I I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd still be playing video games and doing other stuff that I didn't want to probably do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's a big question. <laughs> um, be playing Warframe still. <laughs> I would be playing Warframe still. I still do. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, so. You know, as we've gotten the absolute awesome chance to work together um, with the Project Community Pool Parlor Tournament. Um, so I, I got to ask in that case, um, and there'll, of course, be footage on the screen uh, throughout the episode. But, you know, what what made you guys want to, um, like, work with, like, a bigger organization like Project Community? Like, what what drove what drove the, you know, the desire to, I guess is what I should say. So I've always wanted to kind of push the pool parlor to like, you know, outside because we had done a lot of, you know, indoor events in the sense of, you know, game nights, community nights and whatnot. And that was fun. But I always saw those, you know, I mean, scrolling Twitter and everywhere else and seeing people, communities connect together. I had done that for, I, I wanted to see that happen to the pool parlor. I really had. And so I started like looking out and, and seeing what I could do because I, I wanted to find an opportunity to do that. And towards the end of the 23 Project Festival, I met one of your, your event team lead, Nahombo. And they're a dear friend of mine, but I had no clue what, what Project Community was. I really didn't know. And I, I talked to them about, you know, running events and whatnot. And, and you know, they were like, well, you should look at this. And, and they showed me a bunch of your guys' information. And that was like, it, 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 it sparked something in me that was like, I want to do it. I want to get the pool parlor in there. I, I, what do I need to do? What do I need to sign? Like, let's, let's start the talks. And so I was like, I talked to our staff team in a staff meeting about it. And that was, you know, in a sense, a year before it. I mean, that was a year before in the, in, in the whole process. And, you know, we all were like, that'd be a good idea. So then came, in a sense, the talking. And I had, you know, learned more about it and done my research. And then the worst part, the waiting. You know, it, it was just waiting for it to happen. And then, you know, when I got all of the representative roles and, and everything came in to where I started being able to, like, you know, the ball is moving, I wanted to do it right. I, I started, you know, I was like, what's going on? And then I met Spades, and I had the opportunity to say, you know, you don't even, you don't have to be there. Why don't you run a tournament there, too? And I jumped on that opportunity. I really did. Oh, I'm running away. Um, <laughs> I, I really jumped on that opportunity to just be like, let's do it. Like, if we're going to go for it, let's go all out. So when we had the opportunity to do a custom booth design, I had Toasterly help model it, and and I texted it, and, you know, I was like, you know, I want to do it. I really wanted to do it right and just put... Because I had waited, in a sense, a full year for this. I was like, I am throwing everything I have at this. You know, I, I'm going to go all out and, and just have a blast and really spread the pool part of the community. And from there, I mean, running that tournament and those just three hours i was so happy i was watching everybody have fun laughing and it, it just truly brought it made me so proud to wait the full year and like make sure i did it right and yeah from there i was like i needed like i want to do more like if people love this so much let's do more no absolutely and i was gonna say you know speaking of the booth um one of uh <laughs> and this is a personal thing so one of the biggest things uh as i was your guys's booth neighbor with the novit squad slash novit notes Woo, yeah um, neighbors i can't tell you uh how many times and i know metaverse dgen can actually vouch for this too i don't know how many times we gotten complaints about it not being usable <laughs> because they're like oh this is a sick pool table like oh but we can't play on it i'm like I mean, not here you can't, but there's a whole world that <laughs> you can go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess I guess I gotta ask, you know, would is there any potential chance of maybe making that a skin for the table in the pool parlor? Oh, the project uh, community one in the in the yeah. booth. We could actually probably look into that because we've been yeah. thinking about changing up some stuff with the table skins and models recently. So. I'll say that'd be. Yeah. I'll say then I can finally tell people, hey, you know that pool parlor uh, booth that had the pool table with the cool Project Community logo on it? Yeah, you can actually use that now. So <laughs> I stop stop getting complaints about yeah. it. But 
you know, hindsight. I mean, it is a texture, hind, like <laughs> yeah, hindsight twenty twenty. <laughs> I have it. I'll Texture's take. already made. Right. Yeah, I, I already made it. It's just implementable. Their job. <laughs> yeah, and I will say, uh, I definitely want to thank you both for you know giving you know the PJKT staff uh, a custom pool stick uh, for the pool parlor for working with the event. It was very nice of you guys to do that. Uh, we we had no idea that you guys were gonna do that, so it it meant a lot to us. So we appreciate that. Um, I was gonna say, so going into kind of the the developer side a little bit, um, the toasterly um <laughs> so out of curiosity <laughs> like um what what was like the hardest thing for you to implement to the pool parlor like from when you started fully like getting into the developer side uh, um well the hardest thing to probably implement was the custom physics probably so in the actual menu in the world there is a red gear icon and when you press it, it pops up a custom physics menu where you can adjust every tiny detail of the physics down to even ball spin transfer on cuts versus like when the cue ball is spinning or like how much cuts throw the ball in a certain direction or even the gravity of the pool table to where you can, you know, play things like zero gravity pool that fully work on that table. So I, I've really like, taken the time to advance that part of the table to just like another level i guess no absolutely and i i i've gotten the chance to like play with the settings a little bit the zero gravity pool is fucking bonkers like i bro (laughs) i don't know how you did it like that the coding alone probably took probably hours upon end i i assume uh so the collisions for when it's actually suspended in the air is completely separate logic from when the balls are on the table. So it's all custom made from there on. Wow. Fair. <laughs> I was to say definitely, definitely interesting to say the least. Um, very, very well done first and foremost. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, of course. Um, so I guess out of curiosity, since you guys have done, you know, the pool parlor thing for a while, um, you know, kind of give the viewers kind of an explanation from like, if you can, from like the very beginning with version one to where it is now. I guess I'll start with the I'm, first one. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I came in at like beginning, of, like middle of V3, so I wasn't here for version one and two. So that's all them. So, originally, before the pool parlor, there was the Harry T. World, is kind of what people call them, where this person named Harry T. put out a table and kind of a world prefab, I think, with it. I don't know too much of the specifics. But, uh, and a lot of people kind of started going to these worlds every day. But... For some reason, these worlds would just keep getting taken down and put back up and stuff like that until Metafira came around. And Metafira actually improved upon Harry T's original table by adding jumping and like masse physics, which masseing is where you curve the ball. Um, it added a whole new level to the table, and everybody who would originally go to those worlds before the pool parlor instantly jumped into the pool parlor and everybody was kind of just there every night and it was a really nice feeling um v1 didn't really last too long and and then we kind of went into something called i guess v1.5 where it was just kind of a box and then we fell into the traditional v2 which i actually have a re-upload of v2 on my account with permission from metafira to re-upload it obviously so people can still go to that world and you know have a bit of a, of nostalgia from back then um but so i guess metafira kept improving the table more and more throughout all of this while the world kind of stayed bland Right, It was just kind of just a box with a few lights and some pens in a corner, right? And there was like a simple SAO Thrive menu, right? Mm -hmm. And then 
a lot of people in the community started to really come together. People like Tanzu, Frey, and Peach, and many others all came together and started working on the next big update to the parlor, which was V3. Uh, most people like remember V3 because it had, I guess, kind of the highest player count. Did uh, uh, I think we beat that with V6 now. Yeah, I guess the newest yeah, but... version has beaten that, but V3 was kind of like the height of the parlor, and everybody kind of just, it was just a very wholesome and good time, and everybody had very fond memories of it. But at the same time, Metafira kind of took a step away, and, you know, the development of the table kind of stalled. Uh, and from there on, I mean, I guess Yuko's there, so... I'll yeah, so I, I I came at like the halfway point of V3 in that sense. So not much was happening with the pool table, but the community was still, I mean, at large. Like I could go in there every single night and there was full lobbies. People were having fun, laughing. And, and that's where I really found the love. I mean, that was kind of during COVID, you know, that was just huge. So when people were coming in and if anybody throughout COVID, new players wanted to play pool or anything and they found the pool parlor, V3 was what they saw. So I would end up, you know, as much as I hate to, like, a probably good 75% of my total hours on VR chat has been spent in the pool parlor. And those beginning times, yeah, they were strictly on um, v in V3. So from there, as ownership moved over to you, you made V4, which was the smaller down. It was, it was a very shrunk and very cozy size, um, which people enjoyed. I enjoyed it. I know some people didn't, but I, I know I enjoyed it. V4. V4 I is enjoyed like it. The, the disgusting child V4. Of, of the group, okay? We don't talk about V4. <laughs> V4 was a very small, because V3 had very big ceilings, a, a good few rooms. V4 was much smaller than that. So it got controversy over the fact that it was small and whatnot, and people, people in a sense, were not as happy with it. So... <clears throat> Very soon after V4 came out and, and we realized that, you know, and Toaster realized that people weren't super happy with it. There were a few updates that tried to fix these problems. But inevitably, the idea, which I can, I do remember this, the idea of revamping V4, it just, we, the plan was to just make it, you know, taller and, and add some more rooms to it, inevitably becoming V5. Like, about halfway through, we all realized that by the end, of, like, this is just going to be a new world. Like, like... This people will call I, it V5. I have a habit of every few months. <laughs> yes, you do. In the world from scratch. I don't, yes. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bad habit. But yeah, so this so V5 was a big hit. And everybody really loved it. It was super tall, had a good few rooms. We had a beautiful skybox. A lot of cozy places that people could really chill out if they weren't doing anything. This would also be the time where we implemented the second pool table that has been an underlying thing of the pool pot. Everyone's always asking us during V3, V4, where's the second pool table? The, the, the slogan for the pool parlor was, the pool parlor, there's only one table. We actually had it on a table skin at the time. But we actually have a second table now. And V5 was kind of the start of that. We had a downstairs area, which had allowed for a second pool table that people could play on. Um, and that, that went, in a sense, really far everybody enjoyed that and then we had v6 which is our current pool parlor um which has been even more of a success uh we, we've we've only grown in in the amount of visits and favorites and everything and i mean we've been super hyped out to seeing you know i think we we surpassed a million visits on v6 when did we when did oh, we surpass well, that, that? Was... it was like a couple was months a, ago, was a, yeah. a couple months ago, we had hit the the million visit mark, which was ago, huge. For us. No, it was. I think uh, it was longer than that, but we had kind of surpassed that. And so, you know, it's really impressive to see kind of how we've changed over the years. From you know, just the design of the world changing, and you know, he's the one that does ninety nine percent of the design. I just texture a few things here and there, and since he makes a few models, but you know being able to see how it grows and how they will change the pool parlor and do intricate research on how things actually look and like structures and whatnot is is kind of something to to watch as i get to see it from the back end as it's being designed but 
it is really nice. I think you can agree with me. Like when we release a new world or whatnot and a new version, seeing people, you know, join in it and being like, whoa, you know, this is amazing. This is beautiful. And, and going to explore every nook and cranny and, and whatnot. That, that is kind of something that I do enjoy watching. Um, it, it just kind of warms my heart to see that people are, are really happy with things that we do, um, which I hope you're proud of too, because that's, that's incredible. Yeah, currently V6. You gassing me up. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta do it because you're not doing it to yourself. So you start giving me an ego. He's, you better stop that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, no, definitely, uh, definitely a very long, per se. Definitely, I mean, it was within a span of two years, I believe you said. Like that's still a lot compared. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember V3. You know, V3, I remember, was super popular. You know, like, any, mm-hmm. like, there was always in Trending Tab. Always back at that day. Or was that before Trending Tab? Yep. I don't remember if Trending Tab was around. I think it was just worlds, like, popular worlds or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, it was something. It was popular, something. I but, yeah. But I, I always... <laughs> you're right. I say I always remember that one being up there. Um, But, yeah. No, I was going to say... So with that, so how out of curiosity, how long have you guys been doing tournaments? Like ever since the beginning, or was there like a certain version? It's that... just been since the beginning. Yeah. Fair. I mean, it's definitely come it's further. Been monthly tournaments, like for as long as I can remember, honestly. Like they've always just been a thing, all the way back to probably twenty twenty one. Well, not weekly. I mean monthly. Yeah. Month. Yeah, monthly. Yeah. I mean, they've definitely grown. There's been there's been breaks here and there, but like, it's it's been mo- mostly monthly. Fair enough. But now yeah. we're ramping it up, I guess, and we're hosting yeah. more tournaments than ever. Yeah, I'll say. Speaking of which, um, if I remember correctly, not this is it. This upcoming Saturday. It it is this upcoming Saturday. So funny this enough, this upcoming Saturday. As this episode is being aired, there is a pool tournament. <laughs> so if you're interested, oh. <laughs> so oh, oops, <laughs> scheduling <laughs> scheduling oops. happens. Um, <laughs> Oopsie doodles. Uh, it's, it's a good segue. Uh, um, watch the vod. We'll, we might have those by then. Yeah, we might yeah, have the vod. We'll be streaming it. Um, but funny enough, <laughs> um, yours truly and Chris Connie and Fantasy. We'll be back again doing the commentary um, for Pool Parlor again. I'm super excited for that. Um, so please go check out the Twitch. I'm, I'm, I'll punch you to save the VOD. Um, yeah. you, you specifically. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> I may not be streaming it. I mean, I know someone's going to stream say, it. I loved your commentary during the, the tournament. It was really nice. I, uh, I was roughing it. I don't know if you knew. <laughs> no, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, no. Well, thank okay. you. <laughs> um, yeah, well, thank you. That means a lot. It was actually um, it was the first time in a while that I've done a VR chat uh, tournament commentary. Uh, I've only done like, and it, was not, it wasn't like a big event like Project Community was, but I've only done like maybe two tournaments in the past. They weren't even that like remotely big. Um, so to actually do it like, on the grand stage of project community was very, was very nice. I actually got, I actually kind of got thrown in there. Um, yeah. I was, they're like, yeah, you know, Chris and Nova <laughs> could probably commentate that. I'm like, Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yes, <Back again>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, cause, cause originally, right. Originally, um, before me and Chris even knew that you guys were wanting to do a tournament with us, we were, um, fun fact, we were actually originally planning like a battle disc tournament. Um, Oh, so we already had the oh. we already had the Laser Dome two tournament, which was hosted by Cerex, Uh, and then we were potentially going to have a Battle Disc tournament, and then it wasn't until I think like two weeks, maybe a week or two before, that me and Chris had found out that we were going to be commentating the pool parlor tournament. We're like, oh, okay, like we granted we had heard nothing, so we were like, okay, yeah, cool, let's get it going, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was a few last minute things, but eh, it happens with tournaments sometimes. Um, but no, overall, I definitely say it was uh, it was more than a a phenomenal experience. Um, 
not to mention how many times oh god we we talked about taco bell and a bunch of other crap that yeah. we were, try, we were, try, <laughs> we were trying to burn time so it was I'm, I'm glad I, you I was, enjoyed I was it enjoying listening. <laughs> yeah i'm glad you oh, both enjoyed it. it was it was great it was, it was great um but yeah feel free to check out the vod over at project communities uh twitch uh eventually it'll go up on the project community youtube uh that's soon to be determined um eventually we're yeah that's a that's a story for another time but yeah so with that right so i gotta ask both of you you know going from like the og days to now um what was like the most in your opinion what was like the funniest like tournament that you guys have ever like had or funniest like event that happened during your guys' tournaments i'll say like listening into fantasy's fantasy's shit talking stream oh yeah that because there was a yeah there was there was a portion of time where we would have the pool parlor stream up and then fantasy program the one that also announced with you he would have his own stream and he would referee but he would also shit talk and he would he would just do the the most just just go out of the way to shit talk us and there were multiple times that i would be refing a match and i would be listening to his stream and he would be above me and i could hear him shit talking to me my funniest part of, of those tournaments was where at, just at one point in time I, I just looked up and i was like just just unmute just shit talk to my face and he did he just he straight up <laughs> unmuted himself and just started shit talking down <laughs> on me and and it was it was a it was just made us all laugh um I know we had two at one point in time at teams, a doubles teams. The, the partners were, they were shit talking each other, and then they had just blocked each other halfway through the match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they were oh, just that playing. Was, that was good. <laughs> the, uh, but those are some of my funniest moments. What about you? The funniest? Mm. I, I mean, uh. I, I honestly have no idea. My saying, memory is saying, terrible. Like the most I'm going to be honest. <laughs> or like, or maybe most oh, memorable. I mean, we had the New Year's stuff too. When we had our New Year's well, events. And, and I guess one of the best events we had, in my opinion, was the summer event we did. That was amazing. Do you remember that? <laughs> you mean where oh, they... Okay, uh... never mind. I remember a funny moment. Okay. But I don't think I should talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> This, this yes, you so I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to. You know, I pushed that out of memory. That's why I couldn't recall anything. Is because I pushed come all of that out. Uh, come on, you, you want to so, say it? You want me to say it? <laughs> what was the name of that world? I have no clue. I really don't. Okay, well, we were at a world, a beach world. And there were leashes. <laughs> Let's just say the parlor gets unhinged when they have control over each other, all right? It, <laughs> it basically ended up with there are the a entire few like of me just getting dragged down like like a slope. <laughs> fucking screaming. <laughs> it ended up with about basically the entire moderation team for the group being leashed up <laughs> and dragged around in a line. So like we all had each other's leashes and we're just being dragged around. Yeah, those those uh yeah yeah that was a very interesting that, event that you now that remember. Was, that was, yeah, <laughs> I pushed that one out. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that that was uh that sh uh, the summer bash wasn't it? It was like the the we summer do beach bash. We do this summer. We do. We can. <laughs> I'll say yeah, summer's uh. uh Summer has only got a little bit left before we get into the fall season, so definitely be interested yeah. to hear. Some I mean, of that. we did it at the end of summer last time, so yeah. So soon, then we're we're gonna do one soon, most likely, possibly. Fair. Well, what's the date? It? Maybe we can do it just one year later. Exactly. We can look back at that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have to get the some of the footage from you guys, and uh, if there's if there is any, you said there was. Clips oh, I'll give you some footage. But um, I was gonna say, so with that, right? Um, so when it comes to like getting things together, um, you know, because we've we've talked about uh, like what it takes to kind of get everything set up and whatnot, so. Out of curiosity, what what was like the, um, 
because obviously probably things have changed from when you guys started doing tournaments to now. So when it comes to like forming the tournament, getting things ready and like getting it set and done. So what are some of the things that may have changed like from like the beginning till now? So beforehand it was basically down to one person. Um, like everything kind of setting it up, posting it and everything would all rely on one person. Um, which overstressed someone and they overstressed a lot of like it would it would get to you very quickly. Um, you know, by the end of those tournaments and we also had two day tournaments back then. We had losers brackets, which we're trying to bring back, but for one person to kind of set that whole thing up, by the end of it, it, it drained you. Like it, it really took it out of you to the point where you just lay down and basically pass out afterwards. It, it was very difficult. Um, which is why, you know, I like like with the tournament admin team. I can rely on any one of those three people at a time. It's Orin Cross, Totally Not Tim, and Toaster Wi-Fi. And I, I can honestly say, like, yes, I know I've run a bunch of tournaments, and the goal now is to kind of space it out so we actually have pe other tournament admins running it. But um, for, like, right now, <clears throat> the biggest thing that I, I've had to say I'm super thankful for is, is you know, Toaster Wi-Fi, Orin Cross, and Tim, because I can be like, you know, hey, I'm getting this thing set up. Can you make the bracket? Or like, can you, you know, make the sign up page real quick? And it's just simple things like that, that Wi-Fi can do, and he can just do real quick when he's on his own and just make it, send it to me. We can all look over kind of the rules together and I can be like, is this okay and whatnot? So it all doesn't necessarily fall onto one person. And then on top of that, all those tournament admins can also ref. So if I'm training new refs or anything, or I need someone to step in, they can just quickly step in, which is definitely something that I was super thankful for because it allows me to to take a step back and look at the big picture because when I run tournaments, I will coordinate with the referees. I won't ref a tournament unless I absolutely need to, but I, I'm able to jump around and make sure all the referees are doing okay. If there's anyone that is, you know, hey, like the, it, we need to look at this call closer. I can, you know, pull it aside and, and look at it too. And so there's kind of a lot of things that I'm able to kind of look at big picture and make sure are coordinated instead of being focused on one match and whatnot, um, which was a big help because back then that really wasn't the thing. I mean, it was just you coordinated and also ref. Um, but this allows me to kind of, the delegation of it is what, what I'm super thankful for. I have a team that I, at, at my back that I can trust and I, I will have their backs as I know they'll have mine. And with that, I, I can only say I'm extremely thankful for. It's why every time we do a tournament, I, I say, please, like, if you enjoy what we're doing, turn to your ref, like, thank them. You know, they're, they're all volunteers, you know, <clears throat> and they all applied and they all, like, they all sit down, they learn the rules, they ask questions. I mean, I've skimmed through a bunch of rules just to be able to e explain them myself and, and whatnot. So that whole kind of system, instead of it falling on one person, it falls on a group. And, you know, we've taken it very well to the point where it's like, if one of us screws up, it's a team effort, you know, we're just, we're going to fix it. And um, we're able to kind of be like, hey, this went wrong and point it out and not argue. It's, it's a very, very clean, just like, okay, we'll fix it for next time and whatnot. And that, for that, I can only be like extremely thankful for, which is why, you know, the end of the project stream you saw, I walked up there. I walked up there with the sole intent on that stream to thank everyone that had helped out with it because, you know, it's i mean that's a saturday right that's a saturday evening that you can go and do whatever you want with but they choose to to take their time to come over and help us with the tournament and sit there and and you know sometimes it's not as you know doesn't go as smooth so for that stuff yeah i'm really happy with it and for them i yeah before that it falling on one person was something i i was like i don't want ever to happen again so yeah having that admin team and ref team was perfect no, that's totally fair. No, it it definitely takes a lot to to make something like that, um, and to get it going and stuff. So you know, kudos to you, you know, to making sure your your people are well thanked and everything, because that's you know always. I couldn't do without them. Like always, always. Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. Yeah. So I guess in turn, you know, kind of going back into the developer side a little bit. Um, so 
I guess the I guess there's a lot of questions when it comes to the developer side, but I think one of the people, I think one of the main things that probably a few people are wondering, um, so when's V seven? <laughs> 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 Camera's over there. <laughs> Don't look at that guy. Don't look at that guy. <laughs> um. <laughs> or will there be a V7? I guess. It's in the works. Yeah. But it's a long ways away because, uh, like, V6 took over a month for the blender alone to be done. Because I made it all from scratch. Just Damn. completely. Like, and did light mapping, materials, UV mapping, all of that by hand. And so it, it's it's a pretty involved process, and I don't really take any shortcuts with it when I actually go hard on it. So I'm shocked you said I it. Mean, I haven't told I mean, anyone about V7. We, nobody's known about V7. So for him yeah, to say that, really knows. nobody Never knows. It's exclusive, that is, baby. It's, it, is, um, it is the worst. It is an exclusive. But... You got an exclusive. It, Look at that. It's a few months away, at least. <laughs> fair. No, that's fair. And I know, uh, I know a little, uh, a little VR chat cat told me that uh, there was a little experimentation uh, regarding a sort of specific beta. Um, out of out of curiosity. Yeah, our group. Yeah, I'll say out of yeah, was... the group instance that we did for for uh, the beta on yeah. Monday. We out had of... a we had a community night. Yeah, out of curiosity, what what was all entailed with the beta? So now you can open your menu with M or, you know, forward on your right controller. And uh, another big thing is there's uh, a new mode for pro mode. Oh. Um, on the table, you can now enable collisions for your cue stick, where it doesn't let you shoot when your cue stick is inside of a rail or another ball. Interesting. So you kind of got to play your position and your shots a little bit better and think about, okay, well, if I leave the shot like up against a rail, I'm not going to be able to shoot off of that rail because, you know, or I can't shoot off of it with backspin per se. Right, of course. So it makes you think a lot more about a lot of different things. And uh, so far, everybody I've, you know, shown it to has, you know, been very positive about it. And then along with that, there's, you know, other updates to things such as, you can click with your trigger in practice mode to now actually move balls in the third dimension instead of just on top of the table. So you can stack the balls in a pyramid if you want. Oh, wow. Um, there's updates to the physics where uh, now the actual physics for all of the balls is no longer updated on collision. It's actually started on you know simulation start, which is a massive change. Uh, to the whole thing honestly but i mean nobody's gonna notice but i wanted it to be more realistic so it's just something that's I the goal yeah of course i was say something that and this is just kind of food for thought at this point but um I, I would love to see what would happen if you took an irl pool table right take an irl pool table and then you're in pool parlor but you're at an irl pool table right and then you try to play with those physics and see what happens. Like, oh. play, play two pool games at once, essentially. Oh, that would be... Oh, one IRL and in-game at one... the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. you can match it up so you're so holding a cue stick. Something that people in the community actually do uh, is they will look at shots done in actual IRL pool games and then try to recreate those shots, like perfectly on the table and one of the updates i did more recently actually fixed all of the table sizes to be uh, regulation scale down to a hundred thousandth of an inch so if you did actually have access to a pool table irl it would be the same exact scale one to one that's actually kind of nuts you know i wonder if anyone has ever done that if not, somebody somebody needs to get on that. I, I'm, I'm, I would. I I'd, I'd, I'd love to go and do it. I'd love to see that though. Like have like a camera IRL and then like a VR chat camera and it's just be like a yeah, side, by side, side by side. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be. I don't know. That's something that, to me. That seemed like something fucking cool. Like I, I don't know. That does. Like absolutely. I have a pool table. I can. Ooh. 
<laughs> oh, I have an idea. I'm going to transport some VR equipment around. <laughs> but, oh, Jesus. But, yeah. No, I would say it's definitely definitely a cool thing regardless um, when it comes to the pool parlor and the amazing stuff that's within it. Um, I Hands down, and, um, you know, you, anybody in chat or comments can quote me on this or Spotify, depending on what platform. But pool parlor has got to be, hands down, one of the best, if not the best, pool world out there. So kudos to you guys and your team, you know, making it. A, I don't know. The pool table in the casino world. I don't know if no, you've seen no, it. No, he's going to say <laughs> the casino world. Oh, has, oh no. No, no, no. So the casino world uses a, a, a regular pool table, but they replaced the sound effects with like what can be Brian described can. as like a, a frying pan. Or a jet taking off. What? And so when you hit it hard enough, it just blasts your ears like it's deep fried to hell. And, <laughs> and so it took all, yeah. it took what Wi-Fi was... me and him by surprise, and we ended up crying, laughing for a solid two minutes, basically being unable to breathe. It that that was the highlight of last night for sure. It, it was it was completely unexpected, but <laughs> fair you know. fair enough. Uh, but overall in regard regardless of the meme factor like overall pool parlor has it nailed down to a t so definitely kudos i, I don't guys. think there is really anybody else who has a pool table quite like the pool parlors i guess yeah no it's definitely unique and i've i've gotten a lot of questions about like uh you know releasing it as a prefab or like actually giving out the code to everybody but uh, for me, I just, uh, I find it kind of difficult to do that, uh, for a couple of reasons, but I guess the main one would be the fact that the pool table is kind of a part of the world as a whole now. Like, mm. it would be nearly impossible for me to unstitch the pool table from the pool parlor because they're kind of ingrained together in such a way at this point. Like, if I wanted to actually give the table out to everybody, I would have to give out the entire world. Because you need the entire world for the table to work. They're one and the same at this point. Fair. Fair enough. I mean, hey, you know, not to knock on wood or anything, but, I mean, if if PJKT <laughs> ever wanted a pool table, like, you know, we might, uh, might come knocking. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it definitely hands down one of the most unique and most realistic tables out there on VR chat. So definitely kudos on that one. Um, but mm -hmm. Thank you. yeah, so uh, you know now here's here's a here's a numbers question for you guys. Um, so you have, you currently have had six versions of the uh, pool parlor. So with that if you if you could estimate if you don't know the exact number how many tournaments have you guys had inside of pool parlor god oh oh that's like once a month for what three years there was a portion of time where we didn't have tournaments one was the creation of the parlor so it's you, over 30 yeah. So with all those turn, I mean, we had sections at the time where we where we had a break from tournaments, but then we also had sections also... of times where we ran two tournaments per month. This is a portion of that. Oh, so I would basically say, yeah, do like one tournament 30 every to month. 30 to 40. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> oh That's no, so I just. Yeah. So I'd say yeah, 30 to 40, because we have our tournament winner wall, which has basically all of our tournament winners from each tournament so if i think about that that's four rows of like eight and i don't think all of the tournament winners are on there they're not so they're not people all have because... asked to have theirs taken down for Fair. various reasons obviously so but sure you know 30 to oblige. 40 yeah so you know probably around 40 i'd say 30 35 yeah. to 40 I would, I would say anywhere around there Fair enough. Which is a lot now that I look at that. Yeah. <laughs> that number. Wow. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's three uh, years, I guess. Yeah. No, I mean that's a long time considering. 
Um, but yeah, absolutely. I would say with that, right? It's like crazy. there's there's so many things to do on this platform, and to know that there is a giant community when it comes to you know pool, because realistically, right? Pool's not a it's not like a popular sport to, per se. If you go to certain places, people would fight you over that opinion. Okay? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. That's that true. Is true. Don't walk in the pool There's parlor and say something would... like that. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, well, IRL, 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 IRL. No, IRL, Even IRL. Then, well, so in places like in Europe and, you know, and like that, Japan. like billiards is actually a very massive sport in the world, you know, in the world tournaments actually have many many participants and many you know you know sometimes millions of dollars right on the line so uh like pool is actually very large and also it has that i guess kind of like familiarization with everybody like everybody knows how to play a quick game of eight ball you know everybody's played eight ball before you know and it's just like something you can kind of do while you're talking to your friends or you know doing whatever and then it's just a good time. It's a very idle thing. I find it best to, like, if I'm having any type of conversation with someone, be it in a group or one-on-one, -on -one, you know, there, there's so many times you can you, know, you can sit there and just kind of be like, you know, you know, like staring. But, you know, if you're playing pool, you can you can talk, have a good conversation. It's, it's kind of something that you're doing, in a sense. And I find that very relaxing. I think a, a lot of people do find that very relaxing in that sense, which I, I truly fell in love with. And another thing is, like, uh, people really enjoy to watch pool as well another thing i see a lot in the parlor because i myself end up there pretty much every night now but like it isn't always people playing pool in the parlor a lot of people just go there and lay down and watch just on the side because they enjoy the satisfying gameplay you know you know how it looks right mm -hmm. and so there's just a lot of different aspects of pool that people can enjoy and kind of stop by and check out no, for sure. No, I would say there's definitely in 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 VR. You know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get fucking shot at this point. Um, but <laughs> but like in, in VR, like yeah, Tim the... is gonna burst through the door. <laughs> Sorry, but sick. like but like you know the pool the pool table in general when it comes to VR chat is realistically it's almost a staple. Like almost every you know, bar world, almost every, like, you know, chill out world, almost every chill out world, not everyone, but almost every chill out world has a pool table of some kind, you know, and absolutely all of which have their yeah. own things, but it obviously it doesn't beat pool parlor by any means, but you know, it's a lot of people play pool. Like as you know, you go saying, you know, you could just have a bunch of people chilling around a pool table and just fucking shoot an eight ball. You know, it's, it is, it's, I would say it's probably, you know, realistically, right? I would say it's probably in the top five of things that VR chat players do. Yeah, I mean, you see it in, yeah, so many worlds. You're absolutely right. Like, most of the time, I know a discussion of, like, having a second pool table when we were wanting it is, there are a lot of times that people would just go where the people went. So, like, I've seen numerous times where, yeah, this the second pool table is down there to play, but... If everyone's up there, they'll still be up there, you know? And then, you know, now we have so many people that it does section off into groups, but I've seen so many times where, you know, yeah, they'll fight for the four slots on a team pool player, but if they don't get it, it's like, oh, I'll just get it next round and I'll go, you know, continue talking to my friends and whatnot. And, and, and that, that's what I really find that's amazing about it is on top of, as Toast said, I can go there and just sit in the back and then just listen to music, talk to some friends, and then just enjoy a cozy world that's comforting and have a projector up of seeing the pool table and being like, oh, that's a really nice shot. And then, you know, move on. Like, it's, it's a really nice kind of background feel. And especially the world as a whole is also really cozy. It's just a really comforting world to also be in, to chill. Absolutely. So I guess one of the other things I want to touch base on, because it is a unique thing with when it comes to pool parlor. So let's get more into the competitive side of pool parlor. So you guys actually do in your world have an ELO system. So out of curiosity, what, what, go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. Ask your question. <laughs> You're good. I, I was gonna say, like, what kind of led to what kind of led to that? Was it just based off mainly so, like pure want? Is that I guess? Um. So that was started by somebody named Saren, right? And they uh, uh, they kind of don't come around much anymore, but they still do manage the the whole Elo system. And it was just kind of something for I guess. Uh, everybody kind of wanted a way to judge everybody else's skill, right? Everybody wants to know who's the best of the best, right? And so this was Saren and a few others, like, little project that they put together to try and, you know, show that in a, in a fun way. And so we have, a, we have a Discord bot, and every so often we'll start a league. And once we start a league, a few weeks of games will play where you can actually press uh looking for game on the bot embed and it'll put you in a queue and when another player joins the queue or like if there's a bunch of people already in the queue you'll get a message on discord saying hey this is your lobby join this lobby and play against this person and then you both go and play like uh is it best of three or is it just one uh i think it's raced it three or best of three or race to three i think it's best of three i know you play more than one game yeah so uh yeah you would play your matches against them and then you would tell the discord bot hey i won or hey i lost and then it, you know update your elo accordingly and you know it it's honestly really cool and just something you know another tiny thing that we have well not tiny it's it's massive it's fairly but, large yeah there's a yeah, lot of people who it, like the competitive a, it's side it's just another thing in the parlor that people can use you know to enjoy the game of pool more no absolutely and, and i know i know we have the what we did last time with our last league is after the the set time period had ended we took the it was top 10 i believe and then we put them in a, in a round robin tournament so it was kind yeah, of we've done that and, every time yeah, we've done that about every time now, and, and I'm looking forward to doing it again because I, you know, because that that really gets people hyped. You know, you're like, oh, the top ten, what you would theorize it's is like the like best the, 10. the world championship of pool parlor in a in a sense. Yeah, exactly. It allows you to see kind of you know really where people stand and like, okay, now we're actually putting each other against them in a tournament style setting, and that that's what gets people kind of really hyped out. And I I can't wait to do that again. I really want to do that again because that was fun to run. But yeah, no fair. I was like, yeah, no, it's definitely crazy the amount of things that you guys have done to essentially make pool its own thing within the metaverse. You know, at least make it more. How do I phrase this? Make it more connected, accessible, and accessible. customizable. Th that that works too. Yeah, I was say definitely realistically all the above right you know it's it's yeah i mean with how that's what i really i guess tried to do is you know just uh i wanted people to be able to change anything and everything they could think of on the table you know you want a nine foot table sure you want a green table sure you know you want a blue q stick sure right like and that's I guess, that's what's the most impressive thing with it though sorry i, I mean i like People would just keep giving me suggestions, and I just wouldn't say no. I'd be like, "Sure, I'll shove that in the menu. It'll, it'll it'll take me five minutes in Unity to make that. Like, I don't care. You know, it, like if it'll make somebody have a better time playing pool, sure. Like, that's just what it's about. For sure. No, I I, I did like fun fun little side story. Um. So one of the, one of the things that I wanted to do when it comes to like a world, right? Cause I've, I've interviewed now 21 different types of creators. Uh, one of the big things in my mind was, you know, to whenever I make the world, right. Cause actually in my discord, I do have a forum that people like the guests can fill out and like promote what, you know, their episode and you know, whatever they're doing, like pool parlor or coach or no Yakuza, whatever, whatever it is. Um, but what I want to do for the world side what I want to do is I want to have assets from all the different creators that I have and have them just like kind of showcased in the world at some, like 
so, some sort of way. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do the, the the actual table, but like if I had the model, what I could do is like I could have it like on a like have the table on a wall, like the actual yeah. like top half. Like I get what you mean. Something like that. Save that for later. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. First of all, I want to you know thank the both of you for coming on the podcast. This was really fun. Um, I'll say, unfortunately, we we are about out of time. Um, surprisingly, that's, we, all, that's all good. Yeah, I'll say we've almost hit our hour mark already, which is it. It did not feel like an hour. <laughs> um, it really yeah. didn't. No. <laughs> so, um, really quick before we call it a done deal, um, I do want to give both of you a chance to you know uh, plug anything uh, when it comes to your own stuff. Uh, obviously, pool parlor, of course, but like you know, definitely tell the people, and we'll start with. <laughs> We'll start with toast first. We'll go down, you know, toast and Yuko. But uh, I say, yeah, feel free to, you know, tell them where they can find you, all that stuff. Camera is uh, right over in that general area. But yeah, all right, <laughs> like in uh, this general area. Yeah, I'll look. Hello, <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, in pool parlor pretty much every night. It's really fun. You should stop by. Uh, also, uh, toast early VRC on Twitter. I guess. Yeah. I made that like I a week ago. I made him make his Twitter account. Some, yeah. I, I, I post some cool stuff, <laughs> I guess. Uh, that's, that's it. You want to go more? Yep, we have, a, oh, we we have a Patreon. Got a tournament. Oh, oh, we have a tournament a and a Patreon. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Okay. What would you I'm do with that There you go. <laughs> okay. So, yes, we and do you... have a Patreon for the pool parlor. But I am Uconix. Uh, I, I am a tournament admin, and I do stuff for the uh, parlor. I also am working with the uh, Project Community. Uh, I am on their events team. And on top of that, we're working on a big thing, uh, Virtual Fest. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Uconix, uh, VRC, you know, or X as you want to call it now. But yeah, we are. there is a, a place that I'm working on called the... <laughs> called the Virtual Fest, which is a big DJ and uh, music, uh, music club that's going on the July 26th through 27th and 28th. Um, my Twitter also has information on that. Do check that out. That is that is going to be really awesome. I'm currently uh, texturing out some of their worlds and putting out for the event. But yeah, find me on Twitter. Hit me up for events. Let's have some fun. Woo! <laughs> I'm not cooked. I'm just having a good time. Oh, I'm cooked. Yeah. Well, you go since you, 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 you since you're not cooked. Uh, you want to give all the pool parlor socials out while you're at it. So yeah, we have a pool parlor VRC at the Twitter. You know, for that um, Patreon is toast. Uh, no, it is the pool parlor toast. Uh, pool parlor toaster. It's just slash pool parlor. It's slash pool parlor. Our Discord is uh, discord.gg slash, slash pool, pool parlor. parlor. Basically, if you look up pool parlor on any VR chat thing, you're gonna find us Twitter. Twitch, uh, anything you, you type in pool parlor, you'll find us. If you can't find us, if you want to sign I'm up also for in tournaments. The that's in the Discord. That's in the Discord. If you have any questions about the pool parlor, join the Discord. Shoot me a DM on Twitter or in Discord too. Unhinged really quickly. Yes, it became unhinged. But yes, we'll answer any questions. <laughs> I don't mind. Let Let's go. Let's have some fun. I don't know. It's all pool parlor. That's what we are. <laughs> we live with the pool parlor brand. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't silence us. It's pool parlor. <laughs> well, I do, I do want to thank you both once again for coming on the podcast. This is absolutely a blast. Thank you for having us. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so with yep. that, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, of course. With that, ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark, this has been episode twenty-one of the nova notes podcast my podcast can officially drink legally now let's go um but i do want to oh, thank you all so much yeah. i do want to thank you guys so much for watching if you guys did enjoy uh listening to this episode with the pool parlor fellows um please make sure to leave a like drop a comment down below tell us your favorite pool parlor table because why not it says a lot of tables but if you are coming back to listen to some of the other podcasts smack that subscribe button why not you're already coming back anyway but I do want to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace.